Welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson is going to be entirely about CSS positioning. So there are only two properties for positioning, um, position, clearly, and z-index. Um, the th there are four values for positioning. Static is just regular positioning. Then you have relative, absolute, and fixed. Um, and then z-index kind of uh, gives you the, uh, the, the parameters that tell you which which of your different positioned elements should be in front of or behind them, other elements when you have them uh, overlapping. So position static is the first one, and uh, it's just the most basic uh, because it's the way that all elements are naturally just by default. Um, they flow um, with the rest of the com content normally, and uh, that's just the way that everything always is. So this is a div container with three divs inside of it, and all of them have a position of static by default. Although um, in the CSS, here's here's the uh, here's the three divs on the inside of them, the div containing them. Um, and this CSS is just to kind of like give a little bit of uh, color to it. But if we give an explicit position of static and save, when we refresh nothing will change because they are all static. So basic static behavior is that um, when you have one uh, element, the next element will kind of like move in underneath it um, and respond to it. And when you have elements inside of a containing element, it will fill to uh, take up that space. Um, and so that's just, uh, that's just the way that HTML works. Um, if I were to use margins or something to move one of these, elements up above, the one that would be on top would be the one that comes latest in the, in the uh, HTML. So this one, if I moved it up, would be on top of this one. And if I move this down, I think it would, it would stick underneath. So static is pretty boring. Where things get interesting is with uh, when the relative value when you have positions. So um, it's pretty much the same as static. Um, but the difference is that you kind of nudge it around with, with these additional properties. Um, and it's actually very similar to margin nudging. So if you give a, a top uh, value of, uh, say, 10 pixels, that um, looks at the top of the uh, element that you're dealing with, say this one, and it pushes it down 10 pixels. Um, which would be very similar to if you have a top margin and pushed it down by 10, 10 pixels. The difference is that um, margins kind of interact with other margins in an interesting way, and positioning uh, positioned elements don't don't do that. So let's look um, at what would happen if we if we did that. So I'm going to go specifically at this this one right here. Oops, let's undo that. I meant to copy. Okay, there's the ID. And we're going to give it a position of uh, relative. Okay. So refresh it. Nothing happens because we haven't given it any uh, actual of the the moving one, uh, put, uh, properties. So top ten pixels, say for example, and when we refresh it, it moves it down ten pixels, um, and everything else kind of stays the same. Um, if this had been margin, I think the other two would have been pushed down as well um, because it actually would have increased the size of the block. But because we're dealing with the position, um, moving it 10 pixels down didn't change the, the block at all. The box model stays exactly the same. It just moves down. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's different in that sense from margining uh, differences. And also, um, these stay the same because this is kind of removed from the normal flow, but um, it's, it's only removed from the normal flow after you move it. So you saw when I first refreshed it, it just was where it normally is. Um, so everything else is kind of unaware that, it, that you move it at all. It, it assumes, it behaves as if it had just still been there, even though you've moved it right here. And I can give it uh, a left as well of, uh, say, 50 pixels. And now it pops it over 50 pixels, and now I have to scroll to kind of see the rest of it. 
Um, normally you just need top and left to kind of move it down and that gives you all the positions you need. You can give negative values and what that does is it moves it up negative. Um, same thing here, negative looks fine, pulls it over. Um, now another thing you can do is you can define it in terms of uh, instead of top you can go bottom and it's it's almost the same sort of thing except it's it's uh, doing it by the other from the other direction. So I've given it a uh, a bottom of 10 pixels, which pushes it up from the bottom 10 pixels. Um, so this can be useful if you have uh, an element that's like right now these elements are kind of filling the whole space. Um, but if I wanted to uh, have something align, you know, move down or up from the right from from another angle, not knowing what the uh, what the size would be, um, those could be useful becomes really useful when you get into absolute positioning. Let's minimize that. Okay. So uh, I think I already covered if there's none of these properties specified, then it's just exactly like a static element. Um, except for um, when you have static elements, um, they, they don't affect descendants that are absolutely positioned. Whereas relative elements, um, if they're relative but don't have any of these uh, specified, then it affects children that they have that are absolutely positioned. I'll talk about that right now. So absolutely positioned elements um, are completely removed from